lot to talk about Discordia. We'll see who thinks she's still strong or who thinks she's still weak after these uh, buffs come through. Next up on the list, we've got Horus. Fracture, we are decreasing the cooldown on the ability. And To the Skies, uh, Horus is now going to be able to move faster while selecting a target. And To the Skies, the movement speed that he had in it limited how far he could move. We're increasing that to let him go further. So if he needs to chase an enemy team down further or get his team further away, or maybe try and like get a longer distance teleport onto like the Titan, for example, um, he can now do that more effectively. So this To the Skies change, Pon Pon. Yes. I know we're going really to we're going to increase this number. It's going to look really large. It's going to make this ultimate. I mean, this is ult already a pretty crazy ultimate if you have the right level of coordination. Now, Horus is going to be able to do even more crazy stuff with this. I'm really looking forward to it. That's right. It's Friday and that means it's time for the SPL. We are in week number 4 and lots of teams starting to make some some moving and shaking in the standings. But one team in particular has made some roster swaps. Dolson and Agro to talk you through matchup number one. Yannick is out. Genetics is in playing from Europe. Uh, what do you think about that? And it's a matter of how well he can start to synergize with this team. Genetics has yep. to come in and be a part of a culture shift for this whole roster in my mind. He has to be the catalyst for them. Really what it's going to come down to is how it looks in the battleground. Obviously the big talking point around genetics. Do, do you think with genetics coming in instead of Ionic, you see a shift in, in guardian or, or, or support pick priority? Maybe yeah. the answer is right there with Horus being locked in first overall. Yeah, they they, uh, they answered your question before you even finished it there, Dave. Horus first pick. Now, this works. is twofold. <laughs> Number one, it's one of Rongyu's best gods. So taking it away from him yeah. makes a ton of sense to make sure that genetics is on something comfortable. But that's the secondary thing is that he's on something very, very comfortable. Genetics is a Horus true like main over there in Europe. He played a ton of it during the SML. He's very, very comfortable on this god. And I think that he has some of the more creative alt usage we've seen in the minor league. Now, will those same tricks work at the pro league level? We'll see. But I love this first pick here for United. I think it's strong to give Genetics your, your rookie, the new guy on the block, the first pick. Get him something you know he's going to be comfortable on. Well, it's E-United, a new look at E-United up against Sanguine, who stand at 3-1, and one, tied for second in the league. Game number one, let's kick it off. Nothing for E-United is working right now as Wrong You forces the other two members to back. Not as if Sanguine are tremendously out in front. It's only about 1,000 gold or so that separates the team. And yeah, you can tell, just look at the charts. It's 4,300 experience, only 1,000 gold. That's really the more relevant mark here at this point. I like it. The cheeky play, you see the immediately he starts pulling the gold fury. Three members of Sanguine try to rotate low through United's jungle. If anyone moves up to try and stop them, Sanguine's going to be there. They're going to take the fight. I like the play they're going for. Three levels, now two levels in favor of the mid laner, Shinto. Raijin going to have an insane power spike. The Ethereal Staff already online. He's going to be even harder to kill than he once was. He's going to get some more books online. I imagine there's going to be a Soul Reaver. But oh. United on fire? But look at what Variety's doing. He's posturing around the Fury. So Sanguine must think there's a fight there. And now Sanguine backing up. I don't think they recognize that this could happen at all. And and Myth, you talked about it earlier. This draft from E-United does have a ton of burn potential, but just on the wrong objective. Fire Giant could also go down quite quickly in their favor with Kraken and Secure. And Sanguine, we're not ready. The HP5, the MP5, the additional power, there's, it's so potent. Variety getting aggressive early on. Genetics is already in the To the Skies ultimate. That was purely for the disengage. They get Variety out of there. Sanguine still grouped up in mid to threaten the tier one tower, while the rest of E United, three members strong, threaten the tier one there. And it looks like Sanguine are just going to straight up trade with them. They'll take the tier one and then threaten the tier two tower in mid. Variety comes in to contest. They turn on him, quickly burn him. Now they should be able to get the tier two, but look how much faster E United are moving. Now they are the ones threatening the left side Phoenix. So Yarkor and the whole squad start to back. They don't even grab the tier two, but they're not going to get here in time if this Phoenix has already been burned. So they got to make someone pay on the back side, but Beads comes out. Genetics catches back up. They're fully, fully retreating. Yarkor going to try and disrupt to help the squad catch back up. Sanguine really got to try and find some kills here, but Kraken is further disruption as Sanguine uh, try and keep up the chase. That was a smart play. They knew that Sanguine would have to back there, try and defend that Phoenix, and they could easily disengage just using the natural abilities in their kit. I, I love that play from United. I wonder if this is the kind of stuff that they felt they didn't have with their previous roster, right? The ability to sort of make these on-the-fly calls, this decision-making, just trying to force it. United are going to pull the Primal Fury again. They've got this sustained damage on these objectives. 
to where they can feel comfortable starting up a slight gold lead now as well. They've made up for a lot of the experience deficit, but look at this play they're making with genetics. He's heading over towards fire again, and they're uh, yet again gonna wow. try and trick Sanguine and burn the objective, but look how quickly they're bursting it. They don't even use Kraken for confirm, it's just to take it, and yet again, Sanguine caught unawares. That is some of the smartest play I've ever seen. I'm grinning ear to ear. Show minuscule presence around Gold Fury. It's All of saying you have to rotate in. They immediately ult over the Fire Giant. That's so smart. The slash line for United, one in five. It doesn't matter when you have 4,000 IQ to play the map as perfectly as they have been. <laughs> and maybe this is what Genetics brings, this strategic genius, because they're locking down objectives left and right where they truly don't have the right to be doing so, especially considering how the fights have been going. Five and one are sanguine. Doesn't matter. 4,000, now 5,000 gold in favor of United. Fire Giant fresh on their minds. I I'm so impressed. And Sanguine seem caught unawares, don't they? They're really not sure where they should be going on the map to try and respond to this, or if there even is a good spot. Sanguine up until this point, Myth, they have not been able to respond to these plays from United, but it's so unorthodox. How could you be prepared? Yeah, I, I don't know what you're going to do when literally the entirety of your opposition is threatening one objective, and then it turns around a corner, and they're already burning down Fire Giant. Sanguine did what they had to. If five members stack up on a United on Gold Fury, you have to defend Gold Fury. The counterplay maybe is to drop some wards in the middle of the map, try and cover that rotation path of Horus as he flies across, and then immediately try and run over there. But you saw how quick Fire Giant burns. For now, though, they're grouped up and waiting in mid. They've already done a very good job. Sanguine, that is a burning out a lot of time on this Fire yep. Giant. Only a minute and 30 seconds right. left. But, yep, here it happens again. Where you guys grouped up for, we're already on your other Phoenix. And remember, they burn it so quickly because of this composition. Wow. I mean, even Scream provides good damage. It's a big ultimate for Panatom, though, on the backside that has separated Genetics away from his backline and Yarkor continuing to push them out. Genetics is trapped back in. He will be the sacrificial lamb, but that's fine with E United. They got exactly what they wanted in that right side Phoenix. They'll strip some of the jungle and they're fully retreating. This play style from E United is very reminiscent of every Loki player I have ever played with in ranked. <laughs> they don't want to fight. They don't want to group up. They want to run to the objective that the enemies aren't at and hit that. You guys are going to group around Gold Fear? We'll go Fire Giant. You want to group in mid? We'll blow up your right Phoenix. The United seems conflict adverse at this point. They're not <laughs> looking for any single fight despite the fact that they're, what, 8,000, 7,000 gold in the lead. Fire Giant on all five. Doesn't matter. We're just going to go play the map. Good luck, Sanguine. One Phoenix down, 10,000 gold in the lead. Every time Genetics moves up past his gold free point, I'm just thinking to myself, so he's gonna ult into the Titan, right? It's the next logis logical step for how they've been playing. And it seems like that's exactly what they want. Look how yeah. United is positioning right now. They're waiting for Sanguine to show a little bit too much presence on the map. They see Shinto moving up. They see all these other people moving up. Variety's doing Sanguine exactly what he did around gold. They want to do yeah, that, they... exactly. Variety's showing that pressure. Yep. So the second Sanguine move up, United's gonna be on your Titan. That's exactly what the plan is from them, but I think they might have snipped it out. They should now realize that Variety's kind of a red herring, isn't he? Wherever he is, the play is not actually happening there. He's the one that's being the covert agent. So they forced Wrong Yu to use the ult. Genetics does get grabbed and pulled back, but that's easy for him. That's nice a big no evil though. That hits just about everyone on the side of E-United. Does get good relics out. Erwin has no defensive relics available. He's a sitting duck. Kraken comes out to try and provide him some backup, but Panatom gets the kill. Now they turn to Variety way in the back line, but the Lord of the Afterlife lets him keep up the chase. Netroid gets, does get Snoopy, but Variety gets Panatom, and now they turn back towards the Osiris. They move through the whirlpool, even with all those raging waters, and find one more kill under the Osiris. Sanguine seems to have finally discovered what the weakness of United's draft is, and it is team fighting. That's the first one we've seen past yeah. the 10-minute mark. Sanguine take it cleanly. Still only two kills on the side of United. They find the return on a Panatom, but now Sanguine's in the driver's seat. Uh, FG and the Deicide for Sanguine, and they finally turn things around. They know, they've realized now that Horus is gonna teleport them wherever we, Sanguine, don't want them to be. If we're defending mid, we don't want them on a right Phoenix, that's where they're teleporting. So they know, had they moved up at all, Genetics is gonna be able to find a teleport towards another priority target. Now that their Phoenix is up as well, they can start to move their own aggression forward, which is hamstringing Genetics' ability to just backdoor anything. If Sanguine's looking to start the fight around Scream, they've already missed the opportunity. Bees are back up. 
Panatop finds a big ultimate frenzy, comes out from genetics in response. He's looking to try and chase down Panatop, switches to Netroid, who's all alone, but he didn't bring any friends. Meanwhile, Snoopy has found a way to get back there towards Shinto in the back line and get a pretty critical kill. So now it's Variety's time to keep on diving. Has the thorns popped? Lord of the Afterlife as well, and he's daring Netroid to turn around and output some damage. Now the crits are starting to hit, but not for a whole lot. Snoopy now in range to start providing the damage. They force Netroid to use the Aegis. Finally has to use the dive bomb to get out, but now Hurrowind's here. Hail of Arrows lands. That's big damage, but Netroid found the damage on the Hurrowind in response. So it's a two for one. This is still favoring United. Well, it's United starting up the objective because Netroid is over pulling off one of their favorite plays, which is having him break off to get Oni. And then when someone at United has to defend a Phoenix, then Sanguine can take a favorable fight around FG. They seal a lot of their games this exact way. To the skies, though, they're looking to cut wow. off Metroid, rotating back out from getting the Fury. He does recognize it and saves the dive bomb, but he's all alone. They pop him easy, and Metroid is the one that drops first. Anatom has to disengage. Rongu comes back in. They drop Kraken at their feet to help out. They get thrown back in to the Taiko drums from Shinto, but that's Variety. He's not the target that you're looking for. E United have punished Sanguine's signature play. Everything that goes United's way in this game has been off of the back of Genetics finding a fantastic ultimate to put them exactly where they need to be. United knows that Gold Free just fall. They know where Netro is going to want to go. That he's going to want to rotate safely back towards his team, which is through mid. Let's just go ahead and cut him off. Easy pick. Instantly blow him up. Now they're five strong versus four. They can look to force the fight around Fire Giant. They could look to try and siege down a Phoenix. They could continue just all right. leveraging all these number advantages. Not to sound like Hindu man, but this is some of the cheekiest smite play I've ever seen full stop in casuals, ranked, competitive. United are playing completely around a strategy that they set forth in the draft phase. And they're executing on it incredibly well. And they haven't deviated from the plan whatsoever. They're not looking to aggress in any of these 5v5 fights. They're only looking for picks. They're only to look for these sneaky plays around the back line. And it's working out for them, but not so much so that they've been able to get anything truly decisive. This could be potentially risky. Variety is in some trouble. Good Lord of the Afterlife. But now Snoopy's become the target. So Genetics comes back in with another good to the sky. That could have been disaster otherwise, but well-timed from him. That's not as easy to do as it might look. And it gets Snoopy and Variety out of there. But now 47 minutes into this game, Mifflin, it's going to take something serious to kind of break the state, this sort of stalemate that we found ourselves in here. I mean, you talked about maybe if Sanguine or United could try and find these picks, but they both also have a lot of really good tools to get away from all those people. But it's E United burning the FG. It's E United securing the FG on the back of a crack, and they now got to the skies for the disengage as well. They got to worry about Panatom, who's stuck to genetics. But this is what United wanted a little bit of time to blow down the doors and then the getaway driver that is genetics to get them away. Look at Variety though, he's not with the team. All of Sanguine have moved up into the jungle and Variety is over in right near the wave. Now he doesn't have a minion there with him, but he can push this up. He's just gonna walk in and start hitting the right side Phoenix. So Sanguine, knowing that he's not there, trying to get aggressive and taking the fight there. Instead, no one is backing to try and stop what Variety is up to in this right side Phoenix. He just gets the Phoenix. So Sanguine have got to find something on the back of this fight or there's no way it's a favorable trade but now it's to the skies everyone can just disengage wow here scream gets the kill on the panatom even before the disengage comes through and look where variety is he's still just chilling up here the phoenixes with enhanced fire giant if no one wants to stop him screw it variety's just gonna go ahead and do it himself I'll take it. one phoenix down second phoenix at 50 percent now with the numbers advantage and fire giant wrong you hasn't been able to back united could end United could in, but they're stuck inside the sun. Doesn't matter to scream. The Kraken gobbles Yarkor up easily. They are going to back up, though. They're not ready to start moving into this mid Phoenix yet. They could finally threaten multiple points the right way. They'll send Hurwin over to the left side Phoenix. The rest of the squad's already gotten mid, and suddenly this entire composition, the strategy from Sanguine, has started to collapse. Only three members to defend the Titan, but it's too much damage from E United. It might have taken 53 minutes and 49 seconds, but they grabbed the victory in game one. Kind of poetic that their last siege starts with <laughs> another back door. I, I said that United looked conflict adverse, and they kept that narrative the entire game. 
I don't think that they truly engaged a 5v5 fight themselves a single time that match. No, they didn't. And really, I think Variety and Genetics kind of have to be the heroes of that game for me, right? Variety did a great job sort of being that, that misdirection, the red herring, while the rest of the squad did objectives. And Genetics was the driver that moved them around the map so efficiently there, Mifflin. So that's huge plays from United. Clearly good looks here with that new roster. Yeah, United didn't get a kill until after they'd gotten a Phoenix down. And I think that tells <laughs> you a lot about how that game went. I mean, th this Horus, uh, we talked a le at length a week it's or two wild. ago about Horus and, and what he can bring to a team composition and how it's valuable at a competitive level to do something that no other character can do. And that's what Horus Alt does. It, no other character gets E United around the map that well. Not even Giannis nope. Alt could have done for E United what To the Skies did for them that game. I'll bet every gem I make the rest of the year that Sanguine's going to ban or pick Horus from them next game. That's a lot of gems, and right? then, <laughs> I know, it's a lot of gems. That, that That's my paycheck every week. Sanguine, yeah, not messing around. Get it out of here. First ban, no chance. Genetics gets that again. All right, next up for Nurse, we've got Horus and To the Skies. We're going to be decreasing the movement speed that Horus gains from 135% back down to 70%. He's still going to be pretty fast, not currently as fast as he is now. The god has very strong SPL applications, but is not quite as powerful in all other levels of play. So we're really happy with the buff. We, and we just want to tone it back a little bit to make sure the pros can't do... As they make some really crazy plays, though. I loved it, yeah. personally. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, I know. It's so fun to watch. But a lot of pros were concerned that it didn't really have much counterplay. Some of those strategies were a little too strong. Um, so now, you know, with warding and, and some player positioning and spreading out across the map and decreasing this a little bit, that should help. But you'll still be able to make some pretty sick horse plays in your, in your matches at home, I'm sure, even with this change.